What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Justice Falls. You back at to give another video. Today, we're looking at Wild Hearts, hands-on preview from IGN. Um, this is another game that's uh, been looking kind of interesting to me. Um, it has, like, Fortnite vibes. You can build up some um, materials and use them as, like, weapons f for traversal, like, for defense. There's, like, bombs and stuff, arrows, there's zip lines. And it's in a Monster Hunter type gameplay loop, and it looks dope. So, um, we're gonna check out this preview. So, without further ado, let's get to the video. Jumping right into the action. Okay, I like it. I dig After it. playing more than ten hours of the early game of Wild Hearts, I well, can got confidently hours. say it's an exciting mashup of challenging monster hunting, crafting, beautiful semi-open world environments, and snappy building mechanics that make it stand on its own four legs. Wild Hearts Street, Casey DeFritas. The entertaining hunt, craft, hunt loop of Wild Hearts isn't unfamiliar to me, but the presentation and seamless storytelling were unexpected. Story quests are generally tracked on screen, much like in a standard action RPG, but you can take breaks to hunt specific monsters by starting optional quests from any campfire or the map. Completing oh, yeah. these unlocks like more side quests. optional quests, grants orbs to awaken new Karakuri, the building mechanics of Wild Hearts, and rewards those sweet, sweet mats to upgrade your equipment. It's an easy to understand, streamlined process, which is good or bad depending on your perspective. This might also change as the game progresses. I was only able to fight three of Wild Hearts' large beasts called Kimono and unlock four different upgrades after Kimono. all. There are eight totally different weapon types to master, ranging in technical difficulty from very easy easy to grasp, like the Katakuri Katana, to requiring both understanding and skill, like with the bow. There are short, optional tutorials with a mechanical bear, but they're pretty bare bones. There was a bit huh, of jank I see in the what build I played, there. but learning how to outmaneuver it is just kind of part of the genre at this point. I'd also like some of the feedback to be a bit more crunchy and obvious, but generally, Wild Hearts combat feels good and leads to plenty of hype moments. Wild Hearts is more than just swinging around flashing weapons, though. You can build stuff, the Katakuri, on the fly. This building mechanic really sets Wild Hearts apart from anything else in the genre to my knowledge. No, Fortnite is not in this genre. With Katakuri, I could do things like build crates in an instant to leap off of and deal devastating attacks, or build springs to dash away in place of a dodge, which was especially useful if my stamina was low. Building Katakuri in certain ways creates new structures, like this oh, bulwark. This large okay. wall stopped the King Tusk in its tracks, if I mm. built it correctly. I'll eventually develop the skill to do this under pressure, but the loss of six plus Katakuri at once with no payoff can be quite a ruinous setback. See, building I like Katakuri that. Like, that's fair though, because it's for such a powerful ability, you got to have an equally powerful drawback or it's going to make the game boring. Like, you're just going to be ripping and running through these uh, bosses. Only, only game I make an exception for that would be uh, Elden Ring. Because even if you are souped up and you're powerful, you can still get killed in like three or four hits. Like, unless you got your build crazy to where, like, you know, you got a lot of, um, I don't know which status for, um, for, for health or whatever, but, or like you found all the health grade, health upgrades in the, in the game or whatever, but yeah. I like that. I like that thread, setback. Which is usually overabundant, but it had run scarce in the area we fought in. You can climb any kimono and attack weak points to replenish these materials, but I frustratingly failed to reach the only remaining spots. Unable to build, avoiding the monstrous beast attacks became very difficult, especially with the katana's kit. I got knocked around an embarrassing amount before finally claiming victory. Despite the difficulty I described in this instance, That's I did I, only die one time, and hours. I never failed a quest. <laughs> I also can't help but blame my own inexperience with Wild Hearts at that point, and that frustrating near failure made figuring out what did work all the more rewarding. I slayed the King Tusk in much less than half the time with the parasol-like Wagasa, since I could rely on parrying instead of trying to iframe my way through a wall of fleshy vines. Outside of combat, you'll need to use Katakuri to get around. Luckily, the things you build stay in your world for good, at least until Kimono or you destroy it. Though I was 
was able to explore almost every nook and cranny of Wild Heart's first of four hunting grounds, Hanagasumi Hill, there's still more to do. The gorgeous scenery is rewarding and fun to explore even without the many incentives like gathering crafting materials for meals and equipment. There's even a collectible in the form of 50 Tsukumo, little hunting companions that get stronger the more you find. I found more secrets too, but I won't show more than this. All in all, Wild Hearts is promising and I can't wait to explore more beautiful feudal Japan inspired environments and hunt monsters with my once unreachable PC only friends since Wild Hearts will be fully cross compatible between PC okay, and cool. next Okay cool. That was console. a that was another question I had will it be like cross compatible cuz I know this is going to have an online element. You you have to like you, this these kind of games you, you gotta play it with your friends on your or favorite co -op get some friends RPGs, and play along. Don't miss our review of Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak and seven full minutes of Wild Hearts gameplay. And for everything else in the world of video games, stick with IGN. Okay, that was interesting. Now I'm glad we learned a little bit more about the game because she mentioned uh, if you run out of. Uh, katakuri which is the material you use to build things um then these kimono these big beasts um they'll wreak havoc on you like you need to it's not just a gimmick like it's uh it's fundamental to the combat in the gameplay loop you have like you can't just hack and slash your way through these monsters and i, li I like that i like that um, i like that element so you really have to adapt to a play style that you might not be comfortable with. You might not want. You might want to just do it traditionally and just switch between your weapons and hack and slash and arrow through the enemies. But you can't. Um, you have to get skillful and masterful with your with your kata curries and building stuff, and that makes for to me it makes for a refreshing um, gameplay loop. You know, so um, I'm definitely going definitely going to check out this game. It look I usually with these kind of games they put out like a demo or something like that. So I'm, I'm wait I'll wait on a demo while we wait for the full game to uh come out. Uh but what do you what do you guys think about it? You guys you guys like this game? Do you think it will like like right here like right here, boom. She missed she used up Mad Katakuri. Actually, hold on, let's go back to that. Let's go back to that real quick. Let's pay attention to this meter down here. That's her health meter. I'm assuming, yep. And look, she tried to build, knock that all out, and now, and now, now you have to. Now you're working with less material than you started with. So yeah, I, that, I like that. So like I was saying, let me know if you guys like it. Don't like it? Comment down below. Um, let's have a little discussion. So you already know the vibes. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. This is your boy Justice Falls, and we out. One.